Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker. Play the Opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the Opinion pages of The Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. The Supreme Court is in session again this week, and on Tuesday, it's taking up a pair of cases on whether the Constitution prevents public officials from blocking constituents on social media accounts. Alicia, can you give us a sense of the arguments in this case and which side, in your view, has the better of the argument? So these two cases, actually, there are similar cases that have been percolating in the lower courts, including one that involved Donald Trump and another that involved Alexandria ocasio Cortez. These cases involve whether the Constitution bars public officials from essentially blocking their constituents or residents on their personal social media accounts, whether it be Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook. Now, these two cases, actually, it's interesting that the Supreme Court decided to take two kind of a lower profile cases rather than take a case that involved politicians like Donald Trump or AOC, that would be much more divisive and partisan. In these two cases, the first case involved a couple of school board members in California who had used instead of a personal Facebook accounts while they were running for office to campaign and, and later used them to inform constituents about education related news. Now, the officials claimed that they blocked two parents who were making repetitious and non-responsive comments on their Facebook pages, essentially that they were just almost acting like as bots or just spamming in, repeatedly posting the same comments. And so the block parents who didn't like to be blocked, no surprise, sued. And they argued that the board members had abridged their speech rights by barring them from essentially following their Facebook pages and posting on them. Now, the Ninth Circuit applied similar tests that has actually been applied by four other circuit courts that's kind of roughly described as the appearance and content test. So because the elected officials' Facebook pages appeared to be government-related and they used their accounts to convey you know, their uh, education-related and government-related news, that turned them into de facto public forums. And the Ninth Circuit held that the school members had acted under the color of state law because they clothed their pages in the authority of their offices and used their pages to communicate about their official duties. By that, they mean, well, they posted pictures of themselves often at school board meetings or, again, they related what was going on in the school district. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that a lot of people or public officers, as well as government employees, use personal Facebook pages or Twitter pages accounts to kind of intermix personal uh, posts as well as job related posts. Very few people actually use their accounts for exclusively one function. And actually in Congress, they have specifically government set up or um, accounts that are actually operated by staff. And so in the second case, this was actually in the Sixth Circuit, and it was also involved in kind of a low-level city manager in a small city in Michigan, Port Huron, who had opened up a Facebook page while he was in college, when that was like more than 15 years ago. And he wanted to continue and maintain that page even after he was hired as the city manager of Port Huron. And so he continued to use that page to post about personal matters, including like raccoons in his garbage, the takeout food he was ordering, you know, what was going on in his kids, but also to communicate news in the city uh, that he was managing Port Huron, what he was doing, and to kind of maybe not promote himself, but to at least, you know, inform constituents about what was going on in the city, especially at the time of the pandemic. Now, one city resident, Kevin Linke, who was apparently gained a kind of a bad rap in the town of harassing people online and had actually had some criminal convictions. Now, he posted a disparaging remark on Mr. Reed's personal page and the city manager, um, he blocked him. And now Mr. Linke sued, similarly claimed, like in the other case, that his speech rights were being violated. Now, the Sixth Circuit here in this case actually applied a very different test and dismissed the case, holding that a public official engaged in state action or could basically be liable for infringing on constituents' for speech rights only when they are performing a legally mandated duty of his office 
or invoking the authority of his office. And so because the government hadn't mandated that the city manager set up an account and the government wasn't running this account, it wasn't actually a city manager's Facebook or social media account, it was his personal account, and then he could not be held liable for infringing on their speech rights. And so, again, as I mentioned, there have been dozens of similar cases that have been percolating in lower courts about this, and most of them have actually come down have adopted similar rulings as the Ninth Circuit, and that has basically transformed all kinds of personal accounts into de facto public forums. And I think this is actually one a very important case because it, once you do that, that also actually starts to infringe on the public officials' speech rights. And again, public officials and government employees have speech rights too. Kim, this is an interesting case, another of those of a new technology coming up and then courts trying to figure out how to apply old doctrines to them. But to jump off of where Alicia left off, as long as this is a a personal account and a public official city manager is talking about his personal life and then explaining what he's doing at work or whatever, I have a hard time seeing how that makes sense as a public forum. It seems to me that a clear line would be if a public official were doing city business on Facebook or something like that, if the a public official were saying, I'm going to take applications for zoning variances or something, send them to me through my Facebook account, then it would make sense to me that a court would say you can't block citizens because then you're excluding them from the operation of their own local government. But unless I've misread this, I don't see anything in these cases that applies to that. And so I guess it will be interesting to see where the justices come down here on trying to figure out what doctrine fits these cases. It's hard for me to understand this as a public forum if it's just some local officials giving updates about what they're doing. Right. I think the important thing here is the balance we're trying to preserve is to make sure that simply because one works for the government in some capacity, whether that is a city manager, whether it's an elected member of Congress, whether it's the, I don't know, the local dog catcher, that just because that is your employer, that somehow you do not end up with fewer speech rights than everybody else because of the nature of your job. And I think a lot of this also needs to look at, as you said, the nature of what is being posted. And I would also point out whether or not that particular account is the only way in which a public citizen can interact our city is doing this on this day, or saying just a political statement, I stand with Israel, etc., versus a person, for instance, in a important political job, now putting out this announcement saying that anybody who wants to comment on this particular rule that we are promulgating as part of government needs to do through this link, right? And if maybe there's no other way to get that link, that's the only website they're using, then it would be a problem if a citizen and had been blocked from accessing that account because, in theory, their methods, their ability to interact with the government would somehow be squelched by the fact that this person's account was not giving them access. That's clearly not the situation here. And there are likely other tests that the Supreme Court could to put forward. But I think the important thing is, um, and as Alicia was noting, the Sixth Circuit talked about duty of office or authority of office. The Supreme Court hasn't passed identified different tests for reviewing what counts as a state action, but none of these specifically address the question of the distinction between a public official's government activities and a a public official's personal activities. So this is a way for the Supreme Court to take that up, maybe to be a little bit more clear. But it strikes me that even though we're dealing with new technology, there should be some pretty straightforward questions that could be answered here that would make that that test a lot more clear to those engaged in this kind of speech. Thank you, Kim and Alicia. Thank you all for listening. You can email us at pwpodcast at wsj.com. If you like the show, please hit that subscribe button and we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Potomac Watch.